Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Life starts now. Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. It is September 8th. Courtney, the month is in full swing. It sure is, and it feels like a Monday, if I do say so myself. I just was saying this to someone in the bathroom. It feels like a Monday. It does, and I, you know, when you were off on Monday, the whole week is just messed up. You Except were off for on Friday. Monday? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So was I. Sorry, my brain is a little off today. The good news is it's a short week for a lot of people. We hope you had a fantastic Labor Day. And uh, we hope the weather, you know, was good for you. It was good for us for a minute. Well, yeah, I mean, a couple yesterday. thunderstorms and things and still waiting for that cold front <laughs> yeah. to roll in. But in Colorado, it's snowing right now. So, you know, at my mom's house, it was like 100 degrees yesterday. Yeah. This morning, I checked the weather there, 46 degrees. Oh, no. 46. So, I mean, it could be worse, right? I don't want to wake up to 46 degree weather just yet. No, but I, I'm looking forward to bundling up. You know, a scarf, a vest. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> it still is only September, so, you know, pump the brakes a little bit. We're going to have a great show today. We're a little bit giddy. Everyone's energetic, running around behind the scenes. Even Tex is in studio. I swear he was on that couch a minute ago. Two seconds before ago. He, yeah, and then he <laughs> ran away. He saw one of our producers, and he loves her. But, guys, today is the big day, the big reveal. We are getting to know our brand-new Houston Life reporter, Joe Sam. He is in the house, officially started today, and we're going to share five things, Courtney. I don't know you might be surprised to learn about Mr. Joe. He's standing by, mic'd up and ready to go in the kitchen portion of our set right now. And we cannot wait for him to make his live appearance on the show. It's really fun, for sure. I'm getting excited about getting to know him as well. Plus, a lesson in beer pairings. It's not just for the wine. We have Eighth Wonder Brewery pairing beer with burgers, pizza, and much more. Dishes from local faves like Vinny's, Rodeo Goat, and Jack's Grill as well. So love all of those. And that's like a big thing now, beer pairings. And because there's so many different varieties. And I, I'm learning to like beer a little bit more. I, I'm not a huge fan, but... When you first started at Houston Life, you said that you were not no. a beer drinker. But you don't say that anymore. Not really. I also don't order it, so I'm not really sure what's happening. But it's still good. I never order a beer, ever. You should. There's some I know. delicious beers That's why I'm there. very excited about this segment and the way the food is set up right now with the different beers. So I'm very excited. So many options to choose from. And also, one of the things I love about living in Texas is we have so many local breweries. <gasps> so awesome. Yeah, and the people who run them and own them, so often they have really great stories. Eighth Wonder is right there in Edo. The We Love Houston sign is right there. There's a little dog park. There's the Beatles. You know, I mean, it's such so a great awesome. place to get outside and hang out and especially now in this world where we're living and everyone's wearing masks it's a great place to go and visit and keep your distance from people absolutely enjoy the great outdoors and a killer view of downtown Houston I oh like yeah that. absolutely okay so you had a good weekend we did have a good weekend and you know restaurant weeks is happening yes. right now Super and important to do that this time too well yeah restaurants are really hit hard right over the past few months during COVID and so we got out we were just feeling the need to to get out out and enjoy the great outdoors and so we went on down to the Grove at Discovery Green we had our little restaurant weeks menu right there and what's great about it is it's not only supporting the restaurant it's supporting the Houston Food Bank and they have such a critically important mission to help feed our hungry here in town in this area so it's a great way to give back and also folks it's a fixed menu so you choose you know for 35 yeah. bucks there we chose an appetizer a main course and a dessert so it's a great deal it's a great great cause and your support, you know, gets spread around. And being at Discovery Green, you know that's one of my favorite spots. It really is, and it's such a great backdrop. And also what I love about Restaurant Weeks is if maybe some of these restaurants are a little bit out of your price point, this is a great time to try these restaurants yeah. during lunchtime or just a, you know, a dinner with your partner or a girlfriend or something because they're fixed meals and you it's a great price for what you get at some of these bigger, you know, kind of higher price restaurants. Yeah. I think it's a great intro to these restaurants. I did post 
post on my KPRC Facebook page a link where you can click on the Houston Restaurant Weeks. Yeah. Uh, the menus, you can find the participating restaurants. And also, if you're looking for a place with patio seating mm -hmm. or it just a takeout option. menu, yeah, you can do it for takeout. It's so great. So check out that link that I posted and get out and support the people who need it. And I want to hear about your weekend too, but I got to tell you about Discovery Green because yeah. you know we love this spot. This is where we shot the intro with Joe and Lauren. And that green little construction fence yes. is still up. Check out the new light so feature, good. the new signage, and just behind that green chain link fence, wait for it, mm -hmm. this brand new playground. Ugh. And they have been working so hard. I hope I'm not spoiling their news by revealing the video now, but you know, they always have these cool art installations right. down there. And speaking of being socially distant, Perfect. most people I saw were wearing masks, so that was great. But it's such a great way to just get outside, enjoy our city, and maybe grab a bite at a local spot And while it doesn't you're there. even look humid in that, in that video. It, it looks very cool. It really was actually <laughs> not that bad. Yesterday, was it yesterday? This was a couple days ago, okay. but even that night, there was a nice breeze. I don't yeah. think I even broke a sweat, Oh, Courtney. look at this. I love the new signage that they have, those light up letters. I'm like obsessed with that, and I think it's so perfect for that venue. Yeah. It just looks so great. Mind blowing yeah. that 11 years ago, that was a parking, parking garage. Lot. Yeah, yeah. And look what they've done. I mean, I they've done a fantastic job. I can't say enough about Discovery Green. So get out and enjoy it. It doesn't cost a dime to walk around. It's so fun. And it's a great thing, a great stress reliever too, to just get outside. And I love just seeing all your pictures too that you and Brando post. It's awesome. So, uh, you know, we just were like laid low. Stayed just, home. Stayed home. Didn't go anywhere. Didn't go anywhere. Just kind of chilled, ran a few errands, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, today was a big deal. And uh, I didn't first, want to bring it up in I, case it was painful. It was kind of painful. It was. It was the first day of school, of course, for HISD. And the boys, um, you know, waking them up at like a normal hour. So <laughs> AJ, younger, has to log in. They take attendance at 8 a.m. That's Connor. So oh. he had his first day of seventh grade oh, today. Wow, he seventh was, grade. Yes. He's like, Mom, is this going on the show or Instagram? Where's it going? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both, Connor. <laughs> And look at little AJ, fourth grade, first A day. virtual fourth grade. I know. His little setup was, it was perfect. And I have to tell you that, so there are no desks to be had anywhere. You can't buy them. I mean, I'm, I'm months behind everybody setting up their kids' school. Is that the desk you bought from Katie? It is. So it helps <laughs> when you're, per, when you're, somebody you're working with, is, they're moving. <laughs> and they're moving. <laughs> Our coworker, Katie, yeah. who's leaving the show. Yeah. That is so great. That's Her desk beautiful. and chair. Is that a little Carrera marble on it's the top It's beautiful, there? right? Oh, well, excuse me, fourth grade Andrew, on your marble desk. <laughs> it helps when, you're, when your coworkers are moving because then we get to reap the benefits. I was like, you have a desk? Oh my gosh, how much is it? Because the desk shortage, this is a real thing You cannot thing right get a now. desk anywhere. Amazon, nothing. Nothing. You can't. We wanted to buy Andrew furniture too, bedroom furniture, because quite honestly, as a hand-me-down from Connor, which is everything that he owns anyway, as a hand-me-down from him, and he needs a new bedroom set. Can't even buy that stuff. Gone. Like October, November. That's the shipping date. Are you serious? Yes, I know. Oh no. It's crazy. But he is set up. It was a total disaster today. The hub for HISD crashed. Oh. I just checked with Connor before I uh, walked here on the set. Because he has to submit his assignments. Yeah. And first day they're a little bit more lenient, whatever. But um, today I, I was just checking with him how the rest of your day go, and he's like, "Oh, the hub crashed again." So, <sighs> you know, one of his teachers wasn't able to even log on today. I mean, it was. <laughs> It was a disaster. I'm sorry that I'm laughing. Yeah. I'm just imagining the first day of school, the teacher doesn't even show up because they can't, they can't they log cannot. in. They cannot. And the funny, not funny, but Orlando's working and he had like three phones going at once. And so he's more of the IT guy. And I was going to call Johnny here at work. Can you help me? Because you know me in the IT situation. Not good. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. <laughs> But we managed. AJ did great. They had a little recess time and lunch and, you know. I'm surprised you didn't call me. I knew you were busy, though. You're holding on the fort. <laughs> I know. I, it, let me tell you something. When it started to crash, you don't know if it's you or is it everybody else. Of until, course. you know, you start looking at all the feeds and everything on the websites and figuring out that it's not just you. So did he get everything submitted? Because the problem is, the assignments are due while Courtney is live on the air. It's 3.09 p.m. Yeah. right now, and aren't assignments due at 3.30? Yes, but today, first day, I think they're being a little bit more lenient. And so it was more of like syllabus work and, you know, logging in, understand where you're going. And then there was lots of note-taking for Connor. Um, so there wasn't a lot to submit today. You but know. there will be. It's coming. The Ugh. first day is always a little bit quiet. Well, maybe during commercial breaks... 
you can check in with them. Uh, yeah, I think that would be good. Oh, I do have a story to tell you, though. Uh -oh. So yesterday, uh, I had a few errands to run, and I could tell it was about to rain. Yeah. And I, I had to do a Target run, okay? And I was oh. right there, and I thought, I'm just going to pop in. I bet you actually go in? I, I went in because I didn't do a curbside order. So I went in, and I oh, thought, brave. okay, I'm going to go in because I'm right here. I'm not going to have time to do it. Just just go. And I could tell that it was about to rain. And I thought, oh, that's okay. It's fine. Uh -oh. So I get in the store, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting all the things that I need. And I'm in the back of the store, and you could hear thunder. Okay. Cracks of thunder, 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 thunder. And then the lights go out. <gasps> in Target. Pitch. 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 Black. Pitch no. black. No electricity whatsoever. But the funny thing is, and I'm in the back of the store and I'm by myself, and immediately I thought, gosh, I wish my mom was here because <laughs> this would be so much more fun with her. But I thought, oh my gosh, what should I leave? What should I do? And then the Quick, lights eat flickered. Some candy while nobody's looking. I know. The lights flickered and they came on, but n there wasn't a scream. Nobody was running. Nobody did anything. And then another crack of lightning and thunder, and they go out again. What about the generator system? Like, I would assume I guess a that's, store right, that size, would right? have that. But listen, not one scream. No one was running. No one's doing anything. Finally, I'm checking out. I'm in the line of the self-checkout, and there were some, some gentlemen behind me, and we were chatting about being in Target and the electricity going out. And then there was the Target employee that was standing there kind of manning the line, making sure we were okay. And they were laughing about, you know, being stuck in Target when the electricity goes out. And I said, well, I could think of a lot worse places to be stuck, quite yeah. honestly. And he says, like Walmart. <laughs> he threw some shade. He threw some shade. <laughs> I know. But I thought, man, are you here all week? Because you wow, are funny. He's quick. I know. Very funny. Well, I'm glad everything was okay. You I can see. imagine, I mean, everyone's suddenly silent, like, oh gosh. Yeah. What's about to happen? You I'm hear some walkie-talkie noise, but there, that was it. That was it, crazy. Memorable Labor Day, indeed. I know. Too bad about that vacation none of us could take, but right, you but got hey. stuck in Target with the lights out. <laughs> and a story to tell. Yeah. Okay, guys, after the break, our brand new Houston Life reporter, Joe Sam, is here. He's been hanging out, waiting patiently. There he is dancing in the kitchen. We're going to reveal the five things you might be surprised to learn about Mr. Joe Sam. That's next. Okay, then. Sorry, we, my fly was down the entire first block, and I just realized that. I thought you knew. Worry. The situation has been <laughs> remedied. Zip. Okay, so we first introduce you to our next guest last month during the 3 p.m. launch. And now he's officially a Houstonian. Welcome our newest team member, member reporter, Joe Sam, in Bravo. the house. Oh, yeah, Joe. Awesome. Wow. Welcome. So glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. It feels so good to be here, finally, because I've been watching the show for over two years now when it first We're kicked sorry. off. I know, right? Okay. Well, no. <laughs> but it's been amazing and it feels good to actually finally be in the studio, right? Well, it feels good to have you here in studio, oh. Joe. It's been a work in progress, but I absolutely love being here. I've already met some really cool people here in Houston and some really cool places, too. I was able to check out, like, the Lone Star Flight Museum. Oh, it's yeah. been absolutely amazing, you guys. So I've been having such a blast since I've been here. It's so awesome. You know what I didn't know about you was your sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about that. I know, right? I love tattoos, too. So I, I just love the whole oh. art form. Oh, oh, okay. oh, okay. It's just a dance party. Just yeah, so they just want me to start dancing That in here. sometimes happens on our show, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you must know there are some technical problems here and there. Hey, I always love the dance party. So if you want to go ahead and pop off the music, let's do it. <laughs> oh, I'm my Back God. to the sleeve. Back to the sleeve. So is this something that you are, it's like a work in progress? When did you get to yeah. your first tattoo? Yeah, so I got my first tattoo when I played. Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated it was between getting that tattoo and I had to go ahead and do so just to showcase the diamond on my chest and that just transformed into getting more of the tribal as you can see here so it goes wow. down and it just showcases confidence courage wisdom strength and I wanted to finish the entire arm but I love it because it's such an art form how these artists really make this transform and really make you feel good about yourself by having such something of meaning on your body. I, th it looks so good. And you know, I, I don't <laughs> not have any tattoos. And I, I think I changed my mind so many times. I do too. <laughs> I like a tattoo. They're just so permanent. You yeah. know? You could just draw with pen. I mean, yeah. I do that sometimes. <laughs> I know. It kind of works out. So Joe, we've already established you are from Louisiana. Most recently though, you were working up in Ohio, right? Yeah, I was in Columbus, Ohio, working for Good Day Columbus. And we got a chance to really explore all that Ohio had to offer. Such 
cold out there. It was so cold. All those winters moved me right back here to the south. <laughs> I think that's what got me out of there. But I really did love Ohio. Um, as we talked about before, Katie, she's from Ohio, our producer. And now, being back here to the south, my mom, my sister, my, my nephew, everybody is just so happy to have me back here. And I can go back and check in on them every chance I get. Oh, that's so awesome. And I love that, um, you know, your Louisiana roots kind of show through here through music and food. I mean, you're a big foodie. I'm a big foodie, Court. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because, like you mentioned before, I remember on the 17th you told me to bring my pots and pans. Yes, well, honey. guess what? I brought my pots <laughs> and my pans because we are ready to start cooking. You guys have me in the kitchen right now, so all we're missing is just the food. So yeah. I'm going to start cooking. I love everything as far as etouffees, gumbo, which is my favorite mm. dish. I also love the po' boy. So anything that you need, like such as jambalaya, we got you covered. Oh, we're going to get you guys plump. So if you are on a <laughs> diet right now, you might as well go ahead and scrap that because we're going to. There it goes. That's one of the dishes I made there. So, oh, I mean, wow. really, really cool food that we love to make in Louisiana. It really just brings in the culture. That's some blackened salmon. So, a lot of people mm. just eat their salmon, just go ahead and pan sear it. I blacken mine because that's how you want to get that seasoning in. Just makes it so tasty and delicious. So, we're going to make it fancy for you. We're going to make it good. And hopefully, we can let the viewers, once the whole COVID thing passes, let the viewers try out some of my good old Cajun cooking, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no time like the present. This week, next week, let's have you do a cooking yeah, segment. Let's Why not? do it. You so, guys bring the drinks, I'll bring the food. <laughs> one of the reasons why, Joe, you were really a standout uh, to be added to our team is you sort of do it all. You're a reporter, right? But you also have worked as a producer and an editor. And when you've gone out on stories, you're shooting the camera, you're then editing the footage and writing the scripts and all of that. So is there anything you don't do? <laughs> anything we need to know about? Nothing that I don't know of. So if you know, you have to let me know. But no, I've done pretty much everything like you mentioned. And I, it really gives you a sense of pride because you take pride in your work so getting out there finding those great stories really go ahead and showcasing everything that the city has to offer as you can see i started back in radio and that just transformed all the way into tv so we write we produce we edit we film we do the whole thing and we want to make sure that we showcase what the city has to offer i did it in ohio and i'm going to do the same thing here in houston as well so everybody get ready and buckle your seats because I, we're going to be on a ride i okay. love it and you know what's so cool is usually when we meet a new team member you know a lot of people i think the static answer is um, about the new community. I, I love to get out in the community and I love to do this and just kind of get ingrained. But what's so great about you is that you really do this because your years of volunteering in, in various cities that you've lived mm -hmm. uh, really bodes true. Um, volunteering is a part of you. Yeah, it really speaks to my heart, Courtney, and I'm sure that you guys already know, but I lost my nephew um, at the age of two years old due to child abuse and neglect, and I instantly wanted to get into finding a mission or a purpose to make sure that we continue to carry on his life. So I did so by volunteering with CASA, the Court Appointed Special Advocates, and we worked with them. We worked with a lot of different families and, and children that were going from one home to the other. And volunteering with them really made me excited to get involved in all these other community groups and organizations and not just showcase that pride on camera, but actually putting in the work in the community. And I think that's what we do here on Houston Life, and I'm ready to do so here with all the other communities and all the other organizations that they have to offer here in Houston, especially CASA. That's the one organization that really just speaks true to me. That's incredible, and it's great that you were able to take just such a horribly, unspeakably tragic situation um, and make something good out of it. Yeah. Okay, we're just about out of time. <laughs> we're going to see you more later on in today's show, Joe, but the five things a lot of people don't know, and I'm learning all kinds of things about you. <laughs> You're one of the former best poetry slam artists in I am. Louisiana. I am, and I have been competing all over the Bayou Classic. I've won a lot of competitions, and it really, really does speak to who I am because I love to write, and writing just really made me transform that into poetry. So as you can see there, that's me performing at the Bayou Classic in front of thousands and thousands of people. So I really had a great time doing that, and I still do it now. So we're going to, oh, good Lord. I know. Okay. <laughs> So we're seeing some of Look the other that. things that you love. So you worked as a teacher at the Ohio Media School. Yes. Obsessed with Halloween and all things horror. You and my AJ will get along. That's his favorite <laughs> holiday. Uh, you can tie a bow tie really fast. And BTW, you're an extreme couponer. I am. I love saving money, Courtney. I love spending it, but I also love saving it, too. So I can only be able to spend it if I have it in the bank. So I love couponing and making sure I get things at the cheapest and lowest price.
prices that they're out there for. So anything I can find, I'll go ahead and coupon. I um, love it. I have it. my own little coupon closet, too, where I have all the things saved and ready to go. Well, that <laughs> is quite a talent, Joe. Maybe you can teach us. I swear you need a lot more patience than I have to oh, be a yeah. couponer, right? I got where you. Where you go to yeah. the grocery store and they, like, end up giving you money right. before yeah. you walk out. That doesn't out. ever happen. Just bring all of them in a nice little Ziploc bag and <laughs> drop them on the counter. This is what I'm paying for. <laughs> okay, Joe, that's for another day. But in the meantime, your very first assignment is a pretty big one. You were headed to Kansas City. Yeah. The Texans season opener against the Chiefs on Thursday. And you can follow along Houston Life TV on social media if you'd like to follow Joe and find some updates as well. That's right. And Joe's going to be back on a little later in today's show to play a fun game that will help us get to know him a bit better. All right. We'll be right back. Well, in honor of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, KPRC Channel 2 is going gold with our Fight to End Childhood Cancer campaign. New this year, we have a coloring book made up of artwork submitted by young cancer patients and their siblings. You can download it for free or purchase a hard copy of the coloring book through B.I.G. Love Cancer Care. Well, they're a nonprofit providing resources and comfort to those families whose children are undergoing cancer treatments at local hospitals. If you'd like more information or to make a donation to B.I.G. Love of cancer care, visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. And now let's get a check of today's headlines with Keith and Christine, ahead of Channel 2 News at 4. Hi, guys. Hey, Hi, guys. How are you yeah, doing? That's exactly why I'm wearing gold today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good time I, to, I to do that. I haven't had a coloring book in a long time, but that's a really good reason to get one for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Certainly great to see you guys on this Tuesday when it feels like a Monday, right? Hey, we have seen some rain parts in parts of Houston. We want to check in with Frank to see yeah. how long it's going to be sticking around. You know, it was a good coloring book day, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially this morning. Uh, showers have thinned out. There's some lightning still way to our north, a little bit over here in Chambers County. You've had quite a bit of rain today. Winnie getting a few thunderstorms down to uh, down at the south. Other than that, I think things are going to wind down by about seven, but they'll be back tomorrow. You can see temperatures being held down by the cloud cover. So we got a lot of 80s out there. 77 out of Columbus, 78 in Brenham, 86 down on the island. Speaking of temperatures, it's cold in Denver, 36 degrees. It's really crazy across the country. We have all that fire weather out in California, winter storm warnings for Denver and parts of Wyoming, and then a freeze watch up into the Dakotas. And up. we're just sort of in the summer suit. We continue to see this snow pulling and they've had as much as eight inches of it. And I wanted Derek to see this just outside of Salt Lake City, a 91 mile per hour wind gust this morning. How about that? So walking the dog, maybe a few muddy paws, temperatures in the 80s, a lot to talk about coming up at four. Keith? We don't, we don't want all of that. We just want a little bit of that. <laughs> a little of that cold? <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about how we might get a little bit of a north wind as we get toward the weekend. Okay. Well, that, you, that could you, help. You're saying we have a chance. Okay, yeah. sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Also coming up at four, kidney transplant operations have drastically dropped during the coronavirus pandemic. Health reporter Haley Hernandez will show us how some patients are hoping their desperate pleas online will help save their lives. And also, this was the first day of school for several districts across our area. That includes HISD, which began the school year virtually. Yes, there were some hiccups with students not being able to log on this morning. We're going to check in to see how the district is working to make sure those issues are worked out. And speaking of back to school, our viewers have been sharing photos of their children as they start the new school year. We have got plenty of photos on the KPRC Facebook page. And we'd like for you to send in yours. Just head to our Facebook page and comment on the post with a picture of your child today. And we might even use it on the air today at 4 o'clock. We saw a lot of big smiles and we saw the thumbs down. Hey, yeah. a wild range of emotions today for sure. Some are ready, some weren't. But yeah. hey, they're back. So. All right. We look forward to seeing you guys at 4 o'clock. Back to you guys. All, All right. right. Sounds good. And those wind gusts, by the way, to Frank, no joke. My sister outside of Salt Lake, her power just went out. So uh, stay safe. Wow. To those I know. Crazy there. weather for sure. We'll see you guys at 4. Yeah. Still ahead. Crack open a cold one. Yep, we got a lesson in beer pairing with Eighth Wonder Brewery. Looking forward to that. But first, today's Tip Tuesday with one hour air conditioning and heating involves preparing your home and HVAC system for hurricane season. If you think you might lose power during a storm, go ahead and cool your home in advance so you can stay comfortable until that power is restored. Then shut off your power system to that AC. Electrical surges from lightning strikes during a storm can damage that AC unit. There's also a chance that debris could get stuck in your outdoor unit and burn out the motor. And if you're expecting a hurricane or high winds, don't forget to cover your outdoor AC unit with tarp or plywood. And if you have an elevated air conditioner, on a second story, be sure to secure your outdoor condenser unit with hurricane straps to keep it in place during strong wind gusts. If your area is prone to flooding, you may want to get an HVAC professional to elevate your unit for better protection. And finally,
finally, check for damage before you turn your air back on. This is one of the most important steps. If you have any questions, you can contact the pros at One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating of Houston. You can find them online at onehourhoustonac.com. We'll be right back. We're on the fancy couch. Oh, it's so nice. Welcome to the so living relaxed. room, to the parlor. <laughs> it is time now to learn more about our new reporter, Joe Sam, with this series of Have You Ever Questions? Oh, Lord. <laughs> to discover what kind of person Joe really is. And this sounds sort of easy, I know, but to give it a twist, our producers decided not to quiz Joe, but instead, <laughs> Joe is going to ask the questions, and then Courtney and I will guess Joe's answers using this yes or no paddle, right? And then Joe will reveal which answer matches what he's done in real life. And if it's a yes answer, Courtney, he has to then explain the scenario. Okay, all right, so there he is standing by in the kitchen. What's up, Joe? So yeah, you guys, I hope you're sitting down nice and comfortable because you are about to get quizzed with these questions. So I'm gonna ask you guys the first question and I wanna see who guesses it right, okay. who's gonna be wrong with it. So here okay. goes the first question for you guys. Has Joe ever opened a letter that was not addressed? to him. What's your answer for that? I mean, I hope it's a no, because isn't that a crime? <laughs> so Courtney <laughs> says yes, Derek <laughs> says no. And that is actually <laughs> a no. I have never done oh, that. Oh, good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Typically, my mom does it a lot. <laughs> so my mom, typically, whenever she gets my mail, she goes and opens it up, and, and yeah, so I, I don't like that at all. So we got to make sure that I'm not doing that to anyone else. So let's go ahead and get on to the second question for you guys. Has Joe ever put on perfume at a store knowing he wasn't going to buy it? I mean, don't people do that all the time? Yeah. <laughs> so both of you are actually correct. So Yay! go ahead and give you a hand clap on that I have because I'm getting ready to go to a big ball. I remember I did it for prom before and I didn't have the money to get the cologne. As you guys already know, I had a coupon oh. a lot. Well, I didn't have a coupon for the cologne or for the perfume. So I went to the mall with my suit, tie and with everything. With your tux on and everything? Shh, 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 shh. Look at you. <laughs> and I was smelling good. Just Wait, like how like many sprays? How many pumps was I that? I did about it because you know it has to last a long time. So you spray on a lot first and it wears oh. down as the time goes on. Did you unbutton so, your shirt too? Oh or yeah. did you just, okay. Oh yeah. All so right. by the time I got to the prom, I was set to go. <laughs> for hours. <laughs> I, <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> I was ready to go. But yeah, so both of you guys are correct. I don't do it as much more now, but hey. <laughs> We're looking for you in Dillard's now. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Just bite me out. <laughs> so of course, question number three for you guys. Has Joe re-gifted something that he received as a gift? Oh, I hope oh. so, because that is efficient. That's no. just being that's just being smart. Oh, you are a couponer. Oh, well. I'm gonna go with my I'm gonna say yes answer. to the re gift. Oh, oh well, you know what? Courtney's right. So no, I haven't re-gifted anything. I try and not do that because, of course, I want to make sure I give people the joy of getting something for the first time. And if someone gave me, gave me something from out of a courtesy or whatever, I'll try and keep it. I'm always afraid. Like, what if, you know, I have a gift closet, so if I get a candle I that I don't, you know, whatever, <laughs> but I'm not going to return it. Right. right? there's a leftover tag that's like, Dear Courtney, and then you give it away to someone. Or if it's oh. something that you can't fit, you know? Yeah. And you want to go ahead and just give that to somebody else because you know you're never going to wear it. So so, hey, it all works out. Question four, we're gonna try and get through this. Has Joe ever lied about his age? Oh, I oh, hope not. No. I do not trust people who lie about their age. No. I think it is so irritating. Well, you guys are not gonna trust me because I have done it before. Why? <laughs> Why? So I was trying to get into the club oh, back when well, I was in okay. high school. You pretended to be older than you were. I predict, I, I had to pretend so I okay. could get in there. Oh, and well, that's different. <laughs> lying about age is like usually because you want, you're older than than you're saying. No, 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 yeah. You had to be 18 years of age to get yeah. into the club. And I was just 17. I was about to turn 18 the next month. Oh. All of my friends were getting ready to go in, Courtney and Derek, and I just could not let that happen and have me standing outside, not having fun. Y'all already saw, I like to dance and get my, my party on. Yeah. So I had to lie to slide Joe, on Joe, that's there. acceptable. And I think for many of us around <laughs> that time, I mean, I used Bradford's, my friends, I shouldn't tell the story, but I pretended to be older than I was at the time. Me but too. But what we meant about people we don't trust who lie about their age is 
Have you I ever met someone before? who seems to turn 30 literally right. every year for the past 10 years? Or they forget that they work with people that are the same age. <laughs> and so it's, it's like, like girl, we're not we went to high it. school together. We know we're you're the not same 30. Age. <laughs> and the big no-no that you don't want to do is lie to someone that you're actually getting ready to start dating. Yeah. People need to know how old you are, people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, this is just too funny. I love this next question that's coming up. Question number five. Has Joe ever toilet papered someone's house? Yes. TP'd, or yeah. we call it wrapping here in Texas. Well, both of you are correct, because you already know, as we said earlier in the show, I love Halloween. Right. And every year, my friends and I would just head out there and we'll just go ahead and throw it on. Now, since COVID-19, since we all have so much toilet paper now, get ready, because I might be coming to your homes, Courtney Derrick. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be fun. Good I do have a great time every time that we do that. Don't there. tell so, them yeah. where we live. I know. Don't, don't yeah, just don't tell me where you guys we live, could lie, but I'll find it out. I, I used to be an investigative reporter. Porter. I can find that out. <laughs> okay, so I think we are tied, Joe. Courtney yeah. and I are neck and neck, so why don't we do a tiebreaker question? One more question so we can see who wins. So question number six, and this is the tiebreaker, you guys. Has Joe ever pulled pranks on his co-workers on April Fool's Day? It better be yes. Both of you guys are saying yes, and both of you guys are wrong. <laughs> Never done it before. Never done it before. Oh, wow. Uh, because I hate when people do it to me. So I try and not do it to other people. Oh, so well, I've then guess what? You it. took the wrong job. So tie and tie. <laughs> so both of you guys are neck and neck in this year. But yeah, you're going to get to learn much more about me as we continue. So I may just do that this year. That comes around in 20. How did this question not come up in the interview, <laughs> Joe? Hey, I know. it is what it is. I think they probably already knew that I was a, a wholesome guy. I wouldn't do that. We're going to teach you to love pranks around here. <laughs> we have a good time, don't we, Courtney? We do. Pranks make the world go round. They do. Yeah. <laughs> I know I've seen Courtney get pranked so many times uh, here on this show. So many so. times, but I love it. It's, it's fun. Well, thanks, Joe. It was great getting to know you and your tattoos. Yeah. I know there I have some go. fake roaches in here somewhere. I'm going to use those later. We'll be right back. <laughs> you don't like... Welcome back. You know, nothing goes better with a humid Houston day than an ice cold beer. But do you know what foods go best with brews? Listen, there is a science yeah. behind this, right? Eighth Wonder Brewery president and co-founder Ryan Soroka is here to give us some insight into the art of beer pairing. Ryan, welcome. You know, we love Eighth Wonder. It's a great spot to hang out. And this legit is uh, something that exists when it comes to finding the right beer for the right cuisine. Absolutely. Thank you all for having me. This is actually my first beer Zoom pairing. Do I pour the beer on the camera or directly on the uh, keyboard? <laughs> well, I don't know either one. Works. Either yeah. one's perfect. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure this out. It's not the keyboard. <laughs> so, so this really is an art, though. And explain, like, how this works. What are you going to walk us through today? Absolutely. So you've got a few of our beers. You've got uh, Dome Foam, which is our flagship, uh, Cream Ale. We also, looks like you guys got Tex Beer. It's our newest release. It's a low-calorie blonde ale. And then our newest year-round release is Cougar Paw. It's a nice malty red ale. But the fun thing about beer and food pairings is beer gets paired easily with a lot of different foods, and there's not a whole lot of rules of don'ts and more rules of do's. And yes, you can pair with this. Well, let's get started because I think it's really interesting how this is now pairing because typically for beers, you know, it can be hoppy, bitter, dark, multi. I mean, there's so many different varietals. Is that the right word to use? Yeah, uh, varieties, styles. Uh, that's the fun thing about beer. There are literally dozens of different styles of beers. There's two main umbrellas, ales and lagers. And under those, there's a bunch of different styles that you know of IPAs, blondes, stouts, porters, sours, so on and so forth. And the dome foam you mentioned, Courtney and I have each one of the ones you mentioned. Dome foam, let's yep. start with that. You have paired it with a slice of Vinny's Pizza. Vinny's also there in Edo. They're a neighbor of yours right there on St. Emmanuel. Uh, tell us why you, you paired these two up. Absolutely. So, yeah, shout out to Vinny's. They are across the street from us. New addition to the neighborhood. Great pizza and sandwiches and salads. But, um, look, dome foam is our flagship beer. We call it a throwback cream ale. Uh, it's a pre-prohibition style cream ale and true to its uh, origins, it's got a little bit of corn in the recipe that's gonna provide a subtle sweetness. Uh, but this beer has some body to back it up and a little bit of bitterness from the hops to let you know that there's something going on there. What's really interesting is that pizza from Vinny's is quite smoky with that um, sausage or pepperoni or something, what's on it, but it just, 
it's it doesn't cut it the beer it just perfectly balances together don't you think yeah wow i like to think it, it complements that pizza nicely um it seems like vinnie's had put together a little bit of a tailgate uh package that they're doing with dome foam but um yes pizza's really tasty it's got that sausage and pepper and the two the three different cheeses dome foam is going to tell you it's there without overpowering that pizza i like it mm. all right delicious let's move on to this uh what is it the tex blonde Let's go to text. Yeah, we launched this in March. Uh, we are having some really big expectations, and then, you know, the floor fell out from all of us. But um, <laughs> we're actually seeing a lot of uh, momentum with this beer. This is our low-calorie blonde ale. Um, so as light and crisp as Dome Foam was, this is actually even lighter and crisper. Um, it's traditional Turo and Pilsner malt with some Centennial and Hallertau hops, uh, American and German hops. This is light, crisp, and has a nice little floral hint from those uh, hops. And this is gonna pair deliciously with that burger. Uh, again, Rodeo Goat's our neighbor as well. Great new addition to the neighborhood. I've probably had every single burger on that menu. And um, Tex is gonna just be a really refreshing beer that complements and does not overpower the burger. Okay, so Ryan, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I am a novice when it comes to beer. Um, and, and so I don't know a lot. I know what I don't like and I know what I do like. And I have to tell you this Tex, is so good. It's really flavorful, but light. And I can see why it goes with this big bang of a burger. Totally, it's gonna just be a, a smooth sipper, kind of very approachable beer. If you're not the biggest beer fan or new to beer, this is a really great beer of ours to start with. And it's and, a great uh, flavor. A lot of momentum with it. Yeah. And as we could see, this burger was loaded. The blondes go well, I understand, Ryan, with a lot of different foods. Let's move on to this red ale. This is your Eighth Wonder Cougar Paw. Yes, indeed. Cougar Paw, a little nod to... Uh, the university that my partner and I went to and actually wrote the business plan for 8th Wonder at. Um, this is a nice malty but easy drinking red ale and it's going to have a subtle kind of roasty dry finish to it. Um, reds are in the same universe as kind of ambers and box uh, but this is going to pair really nicely with the Union, uh, excuse me, Jack's Grill, the chicken dish that they have. It's a, a blackened chicken and it's got the beans and the corn and cheddar. It just complements all of that really nicely. I am shocked because I look at this and think it's dark, it's gonna be heavy, it's probably gonna be more, um, not bitter, but more beer tasting. Well, I don't... And just the word malty yeah. freaks people out. I can taste the malt, but it, as you said, Ryan, it's easy drinking. It is, and it's light. T totally. Mm. It's light, you know, most of our beers are light by design. We're born and raised Houstonians, it's summer, eight plus months a year here. I'm sweating in the backyard right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this beer is full of flavor, but really enjoyable and easy to drink. Well, Ryan Soroka, 8th Wonder Brewery, thank you so much. And to Jax, to Vinny's Pizza and Rodeo Goat. We just had dinner at Rodeo Goat the other night. So good. Quinoa Burger is fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for supporting the neighborhood, Ryan. And we'll see you at the brewery very soon. Please, we welcome all of y'all. Thank you so much. Cheers. And we do have an article on our website with info on each beer and dish we featured on the show today. And coming up next, although many are working to create a safe athletic environment for our children, injuries still happen. Learn what you can do to help your child in case of an emergency. As students head back to school and many find themselves participating in sports, no one wants it to happen, but injuries definitely can happen. And joining us now to share the importance of seeking expert care and listening to our athletes and their bodies is UT's physicians, pediatric and sports medicine, orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Jessica Traver, along with Nestle Romero, whose daughter recently underwent surgery. Hi, Cassandra. <laughs> Ladies, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. And Dr. Traver, we're going to get to the specifics here in just a moment, but we wanted to get uh, Nestle and Cassandra's story, really. Mom, when did you know that there was some sort of problem with Cassandra? Um, so we started playing softball again after, uh, you know, we were allowed to go back to the fields in May. And three, four practices in, she started limping when she was running. And we, we realized she couldn't stretch out her hamstring. And, um, you know, and she would tough it out. And she's like, no, I'm fine. It was just the running. But, uh, we ended up taking her to see the UT physicians and, and try to get an MRI and see what was wasn't straight like. So Dr. Traver helped us and we got it figured out and 
found out we had to do surgery and stop playing softball for some time. And I know that, uh, Cassandra, you're described as a seven-year-old softball enthusiast. You look very enthusiastic there with your bright smile. Nestle, for any parent knowing that your child has an injury like a meniscus tear, I mean, that's a, that's a really big deal. And I'm sure a lot of people are concerned that that could have lifelong effects. But Dr. Traver, it is not something that is insurmountable, right? We can correct this problem. Right. So I think, um, as Nestle mentioned, that there's a couple things about Cassandra's specific meniscus tear um, that are a little bit unusual. Um, so she was born with a discoid meniscus, um, which is essentially an abnormally shaped meniscus. Usually the meniscus is a piece of cartilage that sits in between the femur and the tibia or the shin bone, um, and it acts as a shock absorber to kind of disperse the forces working on that joint. Um, but Cassandra, um, instead of having a C shaped meniscus was born with sort of a hockey puck or almost a sausage patty amount of discoid uh, meniscus tissue. Um, and so that tissue tends to be prone to tearing and just being injured by even little things. Like in Cassandra's case, she didn't even have a big injury necessarily. It was just, you know, she was a little bit sore after playing in soft, her softball game one day. Um, and so now with our technology, we're able to do things um, with surgery to kind of decrease the long-term effects, um, whether it's a regular meniscus tear or a discoid like Cassandra's. And Dr. Traver, you know, Cassandra's seven years old, and so I think even as a mom myself, if my boys are having a long practice or something, they wake up, oh, I'm sore. Maybe we kind of think it's, oh, growing pains or, yeah, you worked out a little bit harder today. So, but a parent or a mother's intuition, I guess I should say, you should trust it because that's sort of where we get this or that moment of we got to make a call somebody needs to look at this right no I think that that's a great point is because nobody knows your child better than you do um, and so I think that there are a couple sort of red flags or more concerning types of symptoms to look out for um, that should clue you in when you should seek medical care and so in the case of Cassandra as Nestle mentioned that she kind of came off the field and was limping um, and not just being for a period of 20 minutes or 30 minutes because she worked a little extra hard but um, even into the next day in fact when I saw her in clinic two weeks after her injury she couldn't straighten her knee out all the way, which is something we've worked really hard on post-operatively in a rehab period. So I think um, limping that continues for a couple days, um, lacking full range of motion, or in any child situation in which they have pain that really they don't want to get back to playing their sports, that's not normal for most kids. So anything with those type of symptoms should really um, warn you and warrant you to seek more uh, specialized medical advice. And Dr. Traver, uh, right now as we turn back to Nestle and Cassandra, I do want to point out that you do have this special gift for caring for female athletes. You, uh, you are quite accomplished when it comes to playing soccer. In fact, you were inducted into the Hall of Fame in college. So given your background as a competitive athlete, it seems like you found the perfect career path. It's true. I grew up in Houston, actually. I played soccer at a club team in the city and played Division I soccer at Tulane University in New Orleans, um, and my team was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So I just think that there are a couple things that I was born to do, and one of them is definitely taking care of female athletes like Cassandra. I think um, doing specialized training in both pediatric orthopedic surgery and sports medicine has really given me the tools to be able to give her really elite level care and get her back onto the softball field as quickly as possible. And quite honestly, have a long, lengthy career just like you did as well. And uh, Nestle and Cassandra, Cassandra, how are you feeling today? How's practice looking for you? Good. It was important for us to get Cass, Cass, uh, Cassie back to softball because she has an important tryout this week. So it was good that we were able to give her a shorter rehab period and get her back out on the field. Okay, well, that is fantastic news. Good luck with that, Cassandra and Nestle. Dr. Traver, thanks so much for your time. Sorry we got to leave it there. But in the meantime, if our viewers would like more information, you can visit utphysicians.com or call 888-488-3627. And we'll be right back. Coming up on tomorrow's show, we have gardening for kids, back to school grow kits from Urban Harvest. These interactive kits will help teach kids and adults how to grow their own seasonable herbs and vegetables at home. I love this. Sign idea. me up.
Also, some DIY home updates from new cabinet hardware to one thing I love, motorized blinds. Oh, they make life so much easier. We've got some ways to help you make you uh, make your home look and feel more inviting and functional, Courtney. You know I love a good DIY at home. I know. Okay, we do have a viewer comment from our friend Brittany, and it says, oh. Joe is in the wrong <laughs> building if he thinks he's going to be prank free. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, Joe. <laughs> yeah, Brittany, you are so, so correct. And so earlier, right. Joe, you said buckle up, and we have those same words for you. Yeah, so. for these pranks, right? You're, You're getting ready for it. it. <laughs> it's all in good fun. It is. Well, I guess we're going to toss it over to Keith and Christine now. Yeah, over in Studio A. And Joe, we're glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. I'm ready to go with you guys. Welcome to Houston <laughs> Life. Keith and Christine, we'll send it on over to you. Yeah, welcome, Joe. Uh, yeah. you, got, you guys keep those pranks to yourselves over there, okay? <laughs> We'd love to watch them, though. Everybody's fair game. <laughs> see, Sorry. I told you they were warned. <laughs> no, We've been Get warned. It. We have been. All right, great to see you guys. Thank you. We have a lot coming up uh, at 4 o'clock today. The